What's up, guys? Uh, there's a request for a f like a, a hair modeling tutorial, so I'm gonna do that um, right here. Uh, first step is I'm gonna just select my object and duplicate it, and then I'm going to uh, that's P cube 13 I just made. So I'm gonna hide that. I'm gonna click on the old one, and I'm just gonna go in with symmetry activated, and I'm just gonna kind of select the faces that are become that are gonna become the the uh, sort of the cap of the hair. Um, and then I'm gonna just click on those ones, and we're just gonna extrude that right out. So you can already see this is kind of like the uh, the classic, like uh, kind of an older era dude's haircut. It's just like uh, a little bit. A little bit off the off the skull. It's not too far away. Uh, and you can kind of adjust these points. And um, you need definitely need to fix this back here. Uh, right there. I'm just gonna. And this is just clicking and dragging on, or clicking and dragging points around with the old move tool with W. Nothing. Nothing special. Nothing out of our league, and so there's a quick way to do it. And then, like, if you wanted that part along the side, you know, you could just start multi-cutting in, and then, um, or let me let me do it across here. You just multi-cut in, and yes, it's doing it's doing it on both sides because I have symmetry on, but that's fine. I'm just gonna cut. A little, a little square right there because we're going to cut across here to make that all quadded out. Uh, da, 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 right here. And there you go. And this step is uh, going to be to just select all the faces that aren't the hair. And I'm just going to start going in and deleting them. Because we remember that first step was to duplicate the mesh, so now we have that that extra head sitting in here. We can just un uh, unhide that with Shift H rather than Control H, and you can select it in the in the outliner. Let's see, so you have this other mesh of hair right here, and I find it easier to to model with that. Uh, we might want to grab this whole thing and scale it in a little bit to. Bring it in and make sure that that uh, this little line right here is not visible, like you can't see under there. So pull that in, just make sure it's like that all the way around, and we're looking good. And then with this cut that we made, we can just pull that in, and we have that sort of uh, uh, divot there. Um, this one's moving ladders around in the background, so hope that doesn't bother you. Uh, and then we're just going to multi-cut across here to just quad that out. So now we have all quads right there. And boom, right there. So that's uh, that's pretty basic, like, dude's haircut. And then uh, if you, if you want to get a little bit anime on me, you know, uh, feel free. You just go in here, start... Uh, I'm going to turn off symmetry for this because anime haircuts are usually pretty asymmetrical. And then you just get that... Wah, get that face out there. That's just an extrude operation. Nothing we haven't seen before. Nothing we haven't seen before. And then we're gonna extrude again. Kind of there you go. And you can kind of scale in, extrude, keep scaling, rotating to kind of get that flow of the hair. You're gonna have to do some some fixing for sure. Like like this this point needs to flow out there. Uh, so you can kind of get start to get that. Type of shape right there. If you want the if you want the spiky cloud haircut, then you're gonna uh, just probably extrude out from here and do a similar similar approach. You could always just extrude out, pull it, and then multi cut in and start scaling afterwards to do that sort of uh, workflow. Normally, for these bigger parts, I would want an uh, an edge loop along the side so you can get some more uh, volume on, on this sort of axis you see that way it's not so blocky um, so that's basically modeling like just more wild hair with that method uh, however there's a there's a different method you guys have uh, haven't been able to 
uh, get across to you because uh, not one, not everyone's using it. Uh, two, not everyone even has hair. Like a lot of the characters don't even have hair. Uh, so this is a little, little bit of bonus tool, you know. Uh, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to hide this because that was uh, an old. That was the that was the old hair out with the old and new, right, guys? Am I right? All right, so I'm I'm just selecting over all this stuff again, just making sure I have all the faces selected. Could definitely do that in uh, symmetry mode for a little bit more speed, but uh, it wasn't too slow. Um, but say like for your classic like fantasy uh, woman's hair, like it's usually like long, usually flowing. So um, there's there's a few different approaches that we can do with it uh, to to get that, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to go in and uh, with symmetry on X, I'm going to select all my regular faces again and delete them. Right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. Bear with me for a second. Oops. So now we have that. Um, and then uh, if I go in here, and I always find I always find it's nice to make hair with a little bit of asymmetry because otherwise it looks just like robotic, you know. So if you want to get that like long flowing hair, you kind of pull out these shapes, right, and pull them in. Kind of rotate them as they're going, and then start scaling them in to reduce that size because it's got to, it's got to kind of. Whoops! Cancel. I don't want to reference anything. Uh, and then this is just Control E's and then W's and E's for moving, moving and uh, rotating and scaling, and uh, it's pretty effective. So you get that sort of effect. And then uh, it, it's pretty, pretty rigid looking still. Uh, let me pull out these faces, by the way. Actually, maybe just these faces, Here. just for a little bit of uh, extra volume, you know. Uh, but now it has those those hard edges. And remember to just reset that. You can go to soften edge, so you have that soft, softer uh, aesthetic right there. Uh, and you can always go back in and harden specific edges. Say you're like, ah, I want this to be super sharp. I'm going to go to mesh display and then you know, harden edge, and you'll see how much more uh, like rigid that becomes aesthetically. And then uh, what I was I was mentioning that uh, we're going to use a different method before, right? So uh, that different method is called uh, kind of CV. It, it, it deals with CV curves. And CV curves are just Bezier curves, but in Maya. So if you if you go into um, if you go into that create menu, there's curve tools right here. So you can just click on the grid, then it starts making these curves. Uh, however, uh, like our head isn't down there, right? So like we want to we want to be making these curves like on our head. But you see when I click through, click on the head, it's just still finding the nearest grid point. So what we need to do is uh, constrain all of those to the surface of the head. I'm gonna move these in because I'm a little bit OCD. Um, but what we need to do is to basically be instead of making those on the grid, we need to make those on the head and. Remember, all of our snapping tools are up here. And the one we're going to use is called Make Live Surface, or Make Surface Live. Uh, and you'll see it says no live surface right now. But if I press this little magnet while having my hair mesh selected, you'll see that that cube is now live, or that hair uh, geo is now live, and I can no longer select it. And uh, you'll see that it got, it got put into that position up there. So now if I go in, and go to my create tool, CV curve. Now I can just start making those points on that hair. And so now you can kind of go in 
and start making points along that hair. And I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So if I then go into my, uh, if I just press W to exit that tool and pull up move, and if I go into wireframe mode, you'll see that smooth curve that it created. And so now I can pull these around. You'll see that it's still constrained to the, uh, to the surface of the hair. And I don't want that, so I'm going to click that little magnetic button again. And then I'm going to start pulling these around, right? So I'm going to kind of pull this off to create a little interest. Where our goal is to start making polygons along this curve. And you'll see that. Uh, and and I, so I'm just going to try to bake, break up this initial shape, right? Uh, but now we need to get polys to go along that curve. And there, there's a few things. There, there's a few different ways of doing that. I'll show you both of them. Or, uh, or uh, there's two that I know of at least. Uh, there might be more, but uh, first step, first method, is I'm going to create a poly cylinder. And I'm just going to go into the in, uh, the inputs right under uh, right under the translation values uh, or right under the transform values of that cylinder in the uh, in the channel box, and I'm going to scale this one down. I'm going to I'm going to kind of align it to that curve. Uh, I'm going to align those faces to it, you know. And I'm going to go into face mode. I'm just going to drag over all of it, and then I'm going to deselect everything but this front cap right there. And then if I shift select my uh, my curve, and then Control E. Control E, remember that's extrude, you'll see that it puts that extrusion at the end. And you're like, oh man, what's going on there? So now with this little extrude box open, I can then drag on divisions. And you'll see that it follows um, it follows that curve. Uh, it's a little bit messed up right now because I, I accidentally didn't align to the very start of that. So if I go into object mode move back to the start of that curve right there. We'll get a lot better results. Uh, let's see, I need to align right here. There we go. And there we go. So just shift to select that again, control E, and then drag those divisions. You'll see that it distributes those divisions now along that curve. And you can play with this other stuff too, like offset to kind of like give it a little bit of tapering, like uh, 0 0.02, uh, sure. So it gives it a little bit of that. Um, and so that's, that's a pretty neat little uh, little tool right there. Uh, I'm gonna see if there is. Can I do? Can I add the twist? Yeah. So if you're in um, if you go into the into the attribute editor and then you go to that extrusion that we just did, you can add twist on that. You can also add taper, so you can adjust those sorts of parameters, and uh, it's pretty nice. Um, let's see what else. So that's pretty much it for that um, that method. Uh, you can also do that. Let me make another CV curve real quick. And let me uh, make that surface live. Remember to do that. And CV curve. I'm going to do this along here. I have it kind of meandering through. Then I'm just going to go into W mode. Go into 4. And I'm going to go into control vertex. Remember, you can. You need to go into control vertex to start dragging these points around. Oh, also on this last curve we made, sorry uh, for forgetting this. So that, uh, you can always go into the control vertex mode and then move these around. But if you delete this curve, you'll see that the extrusions also got 
smashed in there. So in order to uh, prevent that from happening upon deleting the curves, you want to go into Edit and then Delete by Type, History. So it'll delete the history of that cylinder object and it's no longer connected to that curve. So then you can just delete the curve and then you have just your polys left. Uh, what I wanted to show you was, one second, let me, let me get these CVs a little bit popped out. There we go. And so the same premise can work it for uh, a polygonal plane polygon plane as well. Um, if I go into the uh, into the inputs of this one, I can just kind of reduce it down to uh, 1. That way it's not at 10. We don't need that much definition. Uh, and then if I just kind of move this up, I'm just going to use V to snap um, here. And then if I scale this down, there. And then if I move this right here, I'm gonna I'm so I'm basically aligning this bottom edge with the uh, the curve. And then if I go into my modeling toolkit and multi-cut, I can make a cut across the middle of that, and I'm gonna kind of pull that out to give it a little bit of uh, volume. Uh, and then I'm gonna select these two edges right there, and then I'm going to shift select. Ah, I'm just going uh, to. If it's giving you problems in selecting the curve, you can always control left click it in the outliner to select it as well. And then so I selected the, those edges and then the curve, and then I can just control E to extrude and drag the divisions like the last time. And then we can go into five mode to see what's going on, and. I'm going to go into the attributes of that as well. So now I'm going to fiddle around with these values. Uh, so we can add twists right there. Kind of twist it throughout there. And th this is essentially what we call cards. Because it's kind of just one plane, right? Like, a, like imagine like a playing card. Like it's just one plane. And then you have your texture over it. Usually with some sort of alpha on the transparency. You'd be able to see through it a little bit. Uh, but you can you can use you can really use these to break up the surface of the the hair model, and you can taper them off with that that taper control, and uh, it, it's pretty nice that, that way. Uh, I like that workflow. Uh, one one thing, oh, one last thing, is uh, is called uh, it's it's using deformers, and you'll see that there's a lot of different deformers in here, and they're they're pretty. They're pretty nifty, but I, I don't find them to be super useful. Uh, they're more for like very select uh, actions. Like uh, you'll you'll see that if you try to use them uh, for for everything as like a solve everything sort of sort of solution, uh, you'll see that they they don't work for every single purpose. So. Uh, but in our for our purposes, uh, there's a there's a very nice there's a very nice uh, tool in there called uh, where is it uh, curve warp. So it's gonna warp whatever polygon object you have along a uh, along a curve. So if I make that curve again, make a new one. Da -da -da -da. So we got that our beautiful curve. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna kind of push these control verts out. Oh, I need to disable live surface. So if I push these out a little bit, and then if I make a uh, if I make a if I just make a cube. And then if I cut into it, multi-cut. Then if I bring in these edges, like that. 
And I might as well just make it a little bit skinnier as well. Then if I just multi-cut this up. Uh, I'm just going to cut it a few times. This, 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 this. Uh, and then um, I might as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna smooth it, mesh smooth. If you go in there, mesh smooth. Well, reduce. No, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Uh, oh man, I'm just not clicking the right buttons. Mesh smooth. That's what I'm looking for. There you go. So you'll see that it added a bunch of polys to that. But if if I click that object, I'm gonna scale it down as well. Uh, and yeah, it kind of looks like one of those frosted mini wheats right now, but uh, it's basically going to take this shape and then stretch it along this curve. So if I select my object and then shift select my hair and then go to deform and then curve warp, you'll see that it's starting to kind of trail along that. And then if I click on that object and go to curve warp one, that node, it's in your attribute editor. You'll see keep length on. If you check that off, it will stretch your object to reach the end of that. And then if you can set the uh, the scaling of it of your object, and you can kind of twist. You can rotate the the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Does this does this work? Uh, you, you basically just have a bunch of parameters in here that you can you can fiddle around with, but uh, yeah, this is just it, it, they're they're all pretty they're kind of similar in how they work all those different operations. Um, but I just, I just wanted you guys to know a few different ones to to make those strands of hair. Uh, and like always, you can go into the curve and drag it around to get if you want to get wild with it. But yeah, so you can, you can do all sorts of stuff with those with those curves, and uh, well, it's it's pretty much it. It's pretty much it. I think you guys have all the tools that you need f to make uh, kind of a stylized hair. Uh, you would there's uh, if you're looking to do some high fidelity stuff in the future, there's something called the like XGen. It's like a Maya plugin that that makes a lot of hair and stuff and but we don't need anything that's like that at high fidelity for this class, so uh, you guys are set. You guys are set. Yeah, but I hope that helps.